Good evening, everybody. Hope everyone's having a happy Wednesday. Um, it's Wednesday night. You know what that means. It's Wednesday night service with the youth here. So um, <clears throat> as we do every Wednesday, we invite you all, whether you're watching through Facebook or in person, to be amongst us to, uh, for praise and fellowship on, on this Wednesday. And so, so with that being said, uh, I, this week we have... The Amen Worship Band that's going to lead us to worship. But before I do that, I do have an announcement. Next Wednesday, we will have a different start time. We'll be starting here at 7.15, just this one week only, because Brother Lucas will be presenting a Zoom session with his ministry, InterVarsity, we'll, and they will be watching the Zoom together, for those who are in attendance, um, over the importance of building a communal and witnessing community community. So that's what's scheduled for next week. So for those who can make it, please join us. We'll start at 7.15. But if you join us earlier, we'll be eating around 6 o'clock. So keep that in mind, please. So it'll be just that one week. The week after that, we'll go back to our normal time schedule. So I know uh, the start time might be a little late for y'all. We understand we can't make it, uh, but we just want to let you know beforehand. So yeah. All right, so with that being said, uh, that's all the announcements I have, and I'll hand it to the Amen Band. Good evening, everyone. You're now going to stand up and join us in praise and worship.
shout your praise Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing Great are you, Lord All the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry, these bones will
Please bow your head and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this Wednesday night. Thank you for everybody who's here. Um, we just hope that whatever message Uncle uh, Mr. Chai has for us today, um, that uh, it's something that we can relate to in some sort of way. I think anytime we hear your word, it can always apply to some part of our life. We just have to find what part that is. So whatever message we hear today, I hope that we can sit, reflect on it, and see how we can uh, improve our lives uh, through with that message. I pray all these things in your name. Amen. No, I'm not Chai, but I was asked to do an introduction for Chai before he came up. Um, so, uh, before Chai comes up, I have a little, little just a few words. Um, Chai and I go back since the seventh grade, so it's like a 20 plus year friendship. So, if you have those kind of friendship in your life, you cherish them. So, um, as I cherish uh, my friendship with him. And so, um, with that being said, um, I hope your minds and your hearts are prepared tonight for what Jai has, well, what God has for on Jai's heart and what he will speak about. So with that being said, all right, Jai, come on up. Thank you uh, for all those kind words. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to talk not mostly in English, but all in English, Okay. So please bear with me, some of the OGs that are in here. Is it this mic or this mic? Both? I need only one. All right. Uh, first, um, first and foremost, I don't know about you guys, but I think praise and worship is so important because I think it just sets the mood. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys agree. So thank you for the band. Thank you for leading us in praise and worship and setting up the stage. Uh, second... Let me introduce myself. My name, in, in case some of you guys don't know me, my name is Jai. I'm from uh, Amen Baptist Church. And um, believe it or not, a few years ago, I was on this stage, and we did a joint service with the youth, and I totally bombed when I was here. Uh, you don't understand how nervous I was, you know, like that. I was pretty nervous, I was sweating, I was blushing, and I was slurring my words because I was just so nervous. Well, hopefully, I don't bomb it this time, and hopefully I do a lot better. Um, also, I just want to say uh, thank you for um, La Liberty for allowing me to be up here and sharing the message. Uh, thank you for setting up this stage as into this place uh, without the uh, elders here, setting up the pillars for the church, for the, the youth. None of you guys won't be here. Uh, thank you for the ladies for cooking and also cleaning. Um, thank you for all the good Laos food. You guys don't understand. I waited all day just to eat some Laos food. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, also, um, we're going to go into prayer. So let's pray. Gracious Father God, um, first of all, just thank you for reminding us to be still and know that you are God, Lord, that you are God of all things and that you are sitting in your throne and controlling things just through your sovereign hands, Lord. Um, thank you for this time right now, and thank you for this place, Lord. May you, uh, your spirit to speak through me. May you uh, use this vessel of mine just for your glory, Lord. Thank you for everything and pray everything in your holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, a lot of people are, uh, are here, right, for different reasons. Some of the reasons people are here are for uh, things like food, great food, right? Wait, none of you guys are here for food. Okay, good reasons for not to be here, just the food. But the food was a plus, though. The food was a plus. Some are here to maybe hang out. Some are maybe here because they were made to come. Some maybe just didn't have nothing to do on a Wednesday evening. I hope that's not, you know, the main reason you're here, but why you should be here is what's on the, uh, the title there is fellowship. I was hoping 
They didn't put that up yet, but you know what? Surprise, surprise. The topic is fellowship. Sorry, my screen just went blank. All right. Um, today, the message is going to be over fellowship, and it's a topical message, meaning that it's just about one topic, and the topic is fellowship. I've always liked to start off with a topical message with uh, the meaning of the word. So the meaning out of, uh, out of Google, the first one is friendly association, especially with people who shares one interest. But now if you uh, look, some of your Bibles have dictionary. In case, in case you didn't know that, some of your thick Bibles have dictionaries, believe it or not. And the definition they give for that is friendship, association, and companionship. So when, uh, before we start on the main verse, uh, let's look at this verse real quick. If everyone can turn their Bibles, I, I hope everyone has their Bibles because we flip into pages. The first page we're going to flip through is 1 Corinthians 12.12, 12, please. So if you guys would, join me in that. I've always, um, believe it or not, I didn't really care to do a slideshow. I had to actually go to Lennon and help do this slideshow because uh, usually I just like everybody to flip through their Bibles. <clears throat> All right, is everyone there? 1 Corinthians 12.12. 12. New Testament. That's right, New Testament. I still hear pages flipping. That's good. That's good. I don't hear any buttons, so I guess that's good. Everybody there? All right, let's read that. The first verse I want to look at is 1 Corinthians 12, 12, and it says, The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. Do you guys believe that? That... Each one of you guys are pieces of this body. Doesn't matter if you're the finger, the toe, the kneecap, the lungs, whatever, the head. No, you're not the head. Jesus Christ is the head, by the way. So no, you're not part of the head. But uh, anything else, fingernails, finger toes, you know? Okay, you believe that, right? Let me, say, let me ask you a question. Um, Brother Chance probably can answer this, but I'm pretty sure everybody can as well. In, in the medical field or medically, what happens when something is separated like an organ or, or a piece of the body that is separated from the body, the main body? A piece of the body, finger, nail, toe, um, your, your lungs, what, what happens to that piece? It dies. I mean, I hope you don't lose your lungs. That would be kind of hard. But, yes, it dies. So now we're going to look at our main verse, and it's in Acts 2, verse 42 through 47. Uh, it's supposed to be 47. I see 45 out there. But hey, it's okay. 42 through 47. So let's turn to Acts. Everyone there? Everyone almost there. All right, let me give you a little background to our, uh, our story here or the verses that we're going to look at. Basically, Acts begins where um, Jesus leaves, ascended to heaven after being, after being resurrected and walked the earth for 40 days. He ascended to heaven, and what did uh, Jesus tell his apostles to do is wait for them, wait for the gift that he promised to them. So they waited in the uh, upper room, and they were blessed with the Holy Spirit. So now the Holy Spirit ushered into every single one of these believers, and they started going out and preaching and preaching to the people, and they were speaking in tongues. Now, there's a lot of interpretations for tongues as were they talking gibberish or if you read in the full context, it's talking in different languages that people understood because during that time, it was actually 
they were about to celebrate, um, I think, the Passover holiday. So a lot of people from different regions that spoke different languages or different tongues came. So these apostles and these disciples that came from the upper room were able to speak these tongues or these languages. So now they created what's called the early church. And now we're going to look at um, Acts 2, 42 through 47. And if you guys would join me in reading it or following along, it says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Amen. So if we're looking at this and the, the topic for this message is fellowship. Fellowship had a deeper meaning than just meeting here, gathering to hang out, especially in, that, in this context right here, in this early church. They were basically, if we look through the scripture again from um, 42 all the way to 47, they were being taught the teachings of Jesus Christ. They were pretty much eating together. They were praying together, they were caring and serving each other, and they were also worshiping together. So in this whole picture, what does it look like, this fellowship? This fellowship looked like they were sharing life together. It wasn't coming to just hang out, it was sharing life together, that everybody was a part of each other. So... Um, now, we're looking at that. What, what else does this fellowship look like? Uh, we're going to look at verse 10, or Hebrews 10, 25. Yes, Hebrews 10, 25. It will flip through that. And look, out, look at also what does this fellowship look like. Hebrews 10, verse 25. I know you guys are there before me, right? Okay, not yet. Okay, okay. No, no worries. No worries. I'll say this. I probably got there faster because I knew where it was. You know, I was, was studying for my message, so I knew where it was. So don't, don't think too, too much about it. All right, everyone in there? I'm there? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you, Carlos. All right, let's, uh, Hebrews 10, 25. Let's see what it says. It says, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habits or are, are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day coming or the day approaching. So that day approaching is basically the day of uh, the return of Jesus Christ. And it's saying we should continue to do that until the return of Christ. So what should we continue doing? First part is uh, continue to meet up together. But, you know, and the second part, it was saying that, you know, some people have, have forgotten that. And the second part is continue to encourage one another, to build one another up instead of tear down. So let's look at another verse that uh, it looks like what's part of this fellowship is James 1 or James 5, 19 through 20. So it's the next book over. James is the next book over, so it shouldn't take too long to get there, guys. Everyone there, right? That's what I'm talking about. Uh, James 5, verse 19 through 20 says, My brothers, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring him back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save him from death and cover over a multitude of sin. Now, what does it sound like? It sounds like part of this fellowship includes 
accountability. Meaning that we should watch out for one another and put others' interests in front of us. You know, it's, it's kind of like, ah, nah, you know what, he's going to do his own thing. No, no. You are part of one body. And it's saying this is that when, when you help your brothers, basically, and brothers and sisters, you help them possibly turn away from sin. And thus, when you make that correction to him, you, you don't just bless him, you bless yourself. And you're doing what God wants us to do is help each other, be part of this one body. If, if, if uh, for example, I don't know if this makes sense, but it just came top of my head, um, is that if you cut yourself, you, uh, would you continue, would you cut yourself? Let's say that. Would you hurt yourself? Like, do you like pain? I think most people don't like pain, so it's kind of like that, is that your brother's suffering, but guess what? Your brother is part of you because you guys are one body. So accountability. Next verse we're going to look at is Proverbs twenty-seven seventeen. So Old Testament. If you don't know where it is, it's after Psalms. A bunch of chapters in, chapter, uh, in Psalms. Right after that is Proverbs. Proverbs 27, 17. We'll flip through that. All right. It's a short verse. Everybody's there, right? That's what I'm talking about. Iron, that's right. Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. So if we're looking at this face value, it, it looks like what? If you guys don't know, iron sharpens iron. <laughs> I, I don't, have you seen uh, how uh, things are made? They beat iron with iron or something hard metal with another hard metal. So it's saying, so does men. One man helps another man. So basically growth. The person, your, your body, basically your other brothers and sister, it's there to help you grow and help grow each other. Basically, more importantly, help grow spiritually. Um, for example, um, I, I, I fish a lot with Brother Chance. Sorry. And uh, a lot of times I go out there and I enjoy fishing. He enjoys fishing. And we hang out. We talk. But a lot of times it's also to fellowship, to help build each other up and, and pour into each other. You know, and believe it or not, a lot of times when we go fishing, we don't catch a fish at all. A lot of times we don't catch nothing at all. Sorry, sister, come. We, we come home empty-handed. It's because we go fellowship. That's what it is. So this iron sharpens iron is that we help grow each other. Um, I've heard this quote a long time ago, and I believe it. Uh, it says, I'm paraphrasing, is that you, if you hang out people better than you, it makes you better. Meaning that instead of you hanging with somebody who's negative and taking you down, it's going to take you down. But when you hang out with people that are positive and bringing you up, they're going to bring you up and thus vice versa. You're helping them bring you up and succeeding as well. So if we look at the last part of uh, back to Acts, turn back to Acts 2. And we're going to look at the last part of that uh, scripture. What happened when all this fellowship would ha was happening? After they were basically eating together, worshiping together, serving and caring for each other, um, and being taught. What, what happened? What did God do? The last part of that uh, scripture, it says, And the Lord added to their numbers daily those that were being saved. Imagine if that was today and our churches did what God asked us to do. Imagine what that would look like. Imagine, honestly, if me imagining that, I look at it like this. If, if we were the church of the early church and all we did was fellowship and be part of each other's lives, there will be less churches and more mega churches. That's what I see. And I'm not saying mega churches are bad. It's just that 
you have more people to use, which is a good thing. All right. So also with uh, biblical fellowship, you'll see that not only you are with other believers, but you are also one with God. So uh, let's turn to the first John one, three to four. And see what that is. First John one three through four. We there? Not yet. Okay, okay. Couple more seconds. Couple more seconds. Thank you. First John one three to four says, We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. Now, this fellowship with the Father and the Son, in this context, if you look at it, it means that they were one with God. They were a part of God and his Son. And... We look through the, the life and ministry of Jesus Christ that he had a continuous fellowship with God the Father. And we're, we're called to be Christians, right? Christians are what? To be Christ-like. So we need to be in fellowship with God, thus fellowship with others. We are one body. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't have a relationship with God without fellowship. I'm just saying that's the picture he wanted. It's kind of like saying that, uh, do you need to be baptized to be saved? No. It's but the picture of God wanting us to be baptized and what he wants, that's where we're obedient to. So by us being one united through fellowship, um, do, uh, do you think people see God in us? Let's look at uh, 1 John 4. 1 John 4, 12. Next chapter over. Oh, oh, a couple of chapters, I'm sorry. 4. Sorry, I can't really see that far. 1 John 4, chapter 12. Is it? I can't. It is. Everyone there? I'm not going to lie to you. As we're finishing up right now, I usually don't like long messages, but I'm starting to get nervous. I'm sorry. You probably hear it in my voice. I'm sorry. Thank you. Believe it or not, I dressed up for this. This is me dressing up. <laughs> Believe it or not. I, I asked Brother Chance. I said, hey, I really just wanted to wear a T-shirt and shorts. And I said, you know what? I'm sorry. I need to dress up like it's Sunday school. But I don't usually wear a shirt like this to Sunday school. All right, back to the topic. Um, 1 John 4, 12. It says, no one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, Holy Spirit, and his love is made complete in us. So love is shown in many different ways. One of them, by seeing, uh, to see love in us, is through fellowship. So pretty much in summary is that you need fellowship. You need to be the part, the part of the body of Christ. Without it, I mean, you continue to have relationship, but is there any growth? Probably not. And to me, I've always believed that if you're not growing, you're dying. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm hoping you're not dying. I'm hoping you're not dying. So, fellowship. Christian, um, biblical fellowship. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to lie to you. I wrote summary, and I did not put a summary. <laughs> so, fellowship is just friendship, association, and companionship, according to 
the Bible dictionary, and we are all part of one family, thus we need each other, and thus we need to fellowship and share in each other's lives. Thank you, and before I end it, I will pray us out. So if you guys would, join me for prayer. Gracious Father God, um, Lord, this thank you. Um, glory be to your name, Lord. Uh, just thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you for um, using me and sharing the message. I hope it's the message that you're wanting to share, Lord. Also, just pray that the, help, the message help impact uh, this body, your, uh, the body of Christ, Lord. Pray that it reminds us that we need each other and we need to be part of each other's life and we need to share in each other's life, Lord. Uh, thank you for this church and thank you for the members uh, and just thank you for your spirit guiding us all through it. We thank you and we love you in your name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you guys.